Heavenly King, Paraclete, Spirit of Truth, you who are everywhere present and fill all things, treasury of all that is good, master of life, come dwell within us, cleanse us from all stain, and save our souls, O good one. Mary, cause of our joy, pray for us. Father, and of the Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. In the last talk, uh, with the help of Dostoevsky, I tried to uh, create an understanding of what is the adversarial situation. And at its root, it's what uh, Dostoevsky pointed out. You see, it's what the Grand Inquisitor decried or dis explained as his agenda. Take care of everybody and they'll follow us wherever we want to take them and eliminates the relationship to God. That's Satan. Now, though at the root of our adversarial situation, there is demonic hatred. Now, it's expressed through laws and customs and articles and books, and but the heart of it is rejecting Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. Now, when we preach, well, what do we have to do? First, we have to be mystics. There's no other way. We have to be so given over to the Lord Christ that he can instruct us so that we grasp and really grasp what's going on and then say it in a way that is winsome, beautiful, wins people over. We don't have to uh, describe the whole panoply that's arrayed against us. We just have to talk about Jesus Christ. And here is the challenge. We can talk about Jesus Christ because we read it in the scriptures and our professors told us about this. That's step one. But we won't be able to really talk about him unless we know him and know him personally. Now, you know we're in the year of faith right now, which is the whole point of this year of faith is to bring it out, bring about an encounter with Christ. My brothers, we who preach are the first called to have this. And we are the first to whom the Lord really wishes to give this grace. But it does mean for us a radical re-understanding of who we are as priests. Now, I know if you're the pastor of St. Gwendolyn's, well, you got to make sure the furnace works. you got to make sure, you know, uh, Mrs. Murphy is, is okay with whatever happened to her. you, you got a lot to do. But the heart of it is a living knowledge of Jesus Christ. And without it, we cannot help people in this situation of adversity. It, it's um, Catholics are easily fooled. You see, if you look at um, Pope Francis right now, you can see something. On one level, there's strong teaching, and on the other, care for the poor. We have to take on our Lord's care for the poor. And I don't mean another huge um, setup. We have enough of those. They're very efficient, and many people get paid nice salaries for running them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about simple, direct, personal care of the poor. Uh, that is one of the basic ways that we preach in adversity. Because the, the, uh, the adversarial stance is that we, the Marxists or whatever brand they are, are the only ones who care about the poor. And we're going to construct a system whereby they're all taken care of and they all look to us and we'll take care of them. That's the drive of the world government. That's not the way Jesus took care of the poor. He took care of the poor out of the depth of his own heart. He fed them in the desert. He uh, healed them. People touched him and were healed. You see, the heart of this is not the rectification of social inequality, 
as important as that is, it's love of Christ. Um, I don't know why the man slips my mind right now his name. It'll come, but I don't need it. Um, But he said, you see, uh, the world is made up of oppressor and oppressed. In every revolution, the oppressors become uh, the oppressed. And the oppressed become the oppressors. But at root, nothing changes. It's only in the gospel, lived out, that there's real change. And that's our goal, you see. So, we don't have to give, necessarily, uh, a teaching on social justice. So they're very important. We have to let people know how much Jesus Christ loves them, and who he really is, and what he expects of them. Prayer, love in their family, detachment from wealth, you know, uh, living a life that's uh, in keeping with the gospel, in simplicity, in joy. When that happens, it, it, it's a new world. And that, you see, uh, is the antidote to the world government. Because it's not world government telling me what to do, it's the Holy Spirit telling me what to do. And enabling me to do it. Now, how do we preach that? You know, I must say, I have pondered this so much, trying to explain, as far as I can, uh, what we do when we preach in adversity. We overcome adversity with the light of truth. And the truth has light if it's preached with love and from experience. I can't pick up Dulubak or Aquinas or anybody else and just quote him. I have to be credible. And that's hard because I'm not credible, I'm a sinner. I have to rely on the grace given to me. You know, uh, one of the documents of the church says the first duty of the priest is to preach. First duty. Because he's the assistant to the bishop and that's the bishop's first duty. And so we have to pray. We have to enter into such a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ that he can bring us into transforming union. That is what's required. Now, nothing else is going to do the job. We can sort of maintain for a while. But if people get uh, convinced that only the government can take care of us, we're in a Marxist state. We're in the state created by the Grand Inquisitor. How do we overcome that? A credible preaching of the love of God. And how can it be credible? We have to know him. This whole year of faith that we're in, you know, what is it supposed to result in? An encounter with Christ. We can't really encounter Christ without loving him. If we encounter him, we will love him. We will see our sins forgiven. We will see the compassion in his eyes. We will know him. And then we have something to say. And that will depend on where you are and what you want to preach about. There are so many issues that you want to warn your people about, but you're not a warner. You know, you're a Christ. You have to listen to the way he does it and the way he wants to do it in us. And therefore, it means that the first duty of a preach of a priest is to pray. Seriously pray. At least an hour a day. Well, what about the furnace and Mrs. Murphy's problems? And I promise you, they'll be taken care of. But if we omit prayer, nothing we do will have any effect on this movement of adversity, which is no joke. And in this country, uh, we could run into real problems um, and become less effective, less credible, less... And if it's our wealth that's an obstacle, get rid of it. More important, I don't, you know, we don't have to sell all our universities and all the rest, but the heart of it, as Pope Francis is doing so well, 
He constantly reminds us because he sees what I've been trying to say here much more clearly than I do. He sees that unless the church is caring for the poor, atheism will care for the poor and lead them astray and uh, ruin their life in this world and maybe for some even in the next. So while the church has to preach the truth, has to announce the gospel, has to elaborate good teaching, it also has to care for the least, the humblest, the poorest, the sickest. We have to go look for them and show them the compassion of Christ. And as we do that, we touch Christ. Just to ask anybody who's done that work, ask some of the sisters of Mother Teresa, ask anybody who's, who's you see, what you did for the least of these, brethren, you did for me. That's Christ. St. Augustine has this uh, homily in which he says, Yes, I am in heaven. I am glorious. My body is radiant with light, but I still suffer hunger. I still suffer neglect. I still suffer from cold. In the world, I still suffer that. Come to my aid. Now that is not another program. Another, you know, all the parish take up a collection and get somebody to give out money. That's good. It's human. It has to be human care of human people. And giving them the dignity of being loved and cared for. I'm sure all of us, nearly all of us, unless we're brand new ordained, know what I'm talking about. People are poorest in dignity. That's where they're poor. Even if they're rich in money, they're poor in dignity. And the poor have that lack of financial ability to distract themselves, which keeps them in the bondage of this sense of inadequacy, of unable to take care of their family. And that's a bondage. That bondage is not broken by money but by love and a genuine human relationship. And that's uh, why, for instance, uh, those people who do care for them, look at Mother Teresa's sisters. Uh, you see, it's direct care in the love of Christ. That is how we have to preach in adversity. I don't mean there's only action. There has to be word. There has to be preaching. So many of our people uh, are middle class. They're in terrible bondage to fear and to uh, fear of losing their money. And we have to help them. We have to help them come to know Jesus Christ himself. This whole year of faith is supposed to result in baptism in the Holy Spirit, which the Pope calls encounter with Christ. That's what it's all about. To know Jesus Christ is to be free and to be consoled and sure and then to be liberated, whether you're rich or poor, and know how to relate with one another. That's what it's all about. And so, the, we're going to go on to develop this more, but the basic thing is preaching and adversity has to come from a heart that knows Jesus Christ personally, and loves him. Amen.